Hey there everyone, Ramesh here. In this video, I am going to talk about Java Developer Roadmap or the learning path for Java developer. Well, if you are Java beginner and wanted to become a Java developer, then you are in a right place. In this video, I am going to talk about what are the skills that you learn to become a Java developer. Alright guys, uh, without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll look into the core Java development and then Java W development and then we'll look into the tools for Java development and then we'll look into the commonly used utility, utility libraries for Java development. So let's begin with core Java development. So here are the things that I have listed here that you can learn to work on core Java development. Let's begin with core Java. So core Java is a base for all other Java W frameworks. Make sure that you have a good foundation in core java so here i have listed some of the commonly used core java topics that you can take a note java basics so you should have a good understanding of jvm jdk and gre and how they works and uh, arrays uh, you know and loops control statements variables and access modifiers so these are the java basics that you should learn first and then you can learn oops concepts string handlings generics collections framework multi-threading and concurrency exception handling and of course you should learn jdbc to connect to uh, different databases and java 8 features you should learn lambda expression java 8 stream apis uh, you know functional interfaces so these are the very important java 8 features as a java programmer you should learn and file io so if you want to work with files and directories then you should learn file io so these are the commonly uh, you know used topics in core java so you can take a note of it next move to the data structures and algorithms well data structures and algorithms are the building blocks for any programming language as a programmer you should have a good understanding of data structures and algorithms so here i have listed some of the commonly used data structures and algorithms data structures like array linked list tag queue binary tree heap grab and algorithms like sorting algorithms and searching algorithms so as a programmer you should have a good understanding of data structures and algorithms as well so while writing a logic you will make use of these data structures and algorithms well next is java testing so we have JUnit framework and Makuto in Java to uh, to uh, you know write a JUnit test cases. You may not get a question in interviews on these JUnit framework and Makuto, but make sure that you will learn JUnit framework and Makuto in order to write a JUnit test cases. So whenever uh, you know you write a logic in your Java projects, then you should um, you know create a JUnit test cases to test your logic. All right, guys. So JUnit uh, in Makuto is very essential uh, skill for Java developer uh, in case of uh, testing your uh, Java development. Next is relational databases and NoSQL databases. So as a Java developer, you should have good understanding of databases as well. So here I have listed some of the common databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, MS SQL Server. So these are the commonly used uh, relational databases that, that you can have a look into. As a Java developer, you should know uh, these commonly used relational databases. And here I have listed some of the NoSQL databases like MongoDB and Elasticsearch. So these are the you know popular NoSQL databases that uh, you know uh, companies prefer to use as a databases. So there are a lot of NoSQL out NoSQL databases out there like CouchDB, Cassandra, and Solar. So these are the commonly used databases I have listed over here. And next is design patterns. So as a Java developer, you should know the commonly used design patterns uh, so that you can make use of these design patterns in your Java project or Java development. So whenever you develop uh, you know, architecture for your Java application, then you, you will make use of uh, design patterns like application uh, level design patterns, architecture level design patterns. All right. And uh, yeah, so here is a gang of four design patterns. So have a look into gang, all the gang of four design patterns because these are the commonly used design patterns 
uh, as a Java developer, you should know all the common languages and patterns. Next is desktop application development. So if you want to uh, develop a desktop based application, then you should learn either Swing or Java Apex. So Swing is kind of a legacy library and Java Apex is a modern uh, library that you can use to develop a desktop applications. Well, once you are familiar with core Java, JDBC and relational databases, then you can create a desktop application using either Swing or Java Apex. So these are the things you can uh, you know learn to work on core Java development. Let's move to Java WE development. So here are the technology that I have listed that you can learn to work on Java WE development. So JSP, Serlet, JPA, JAX, RS, JAX, W. So these are the technologies in Java WE development. So JSP, Serlet we use to develop our web applications and JPA is a standard Java persistent API which we can use to connect to the databases and to perform different operations and JPA is just a you know specification or a standard library uh, but there are a lot of implementations out there like Hibernate, Eclipse Link and JAXRS is a standard API for developing REST APIs and we have a Jersey framework and REST EZ framework so these are the two popular frameworks that implements JAXRS API and we can use Jesse framework or STG uh, framework to develop our REST APIs and JAXWS is the API that we can use to develop a SOAP web services alright next is Spring framework well Spring framework is very popular Java W framework which we can use to simplify our Java W development and we use Spring framework to develop enterprise applications Spring Framework is become a one of the essential skill for Java developers. So make sure that you will learn Spring Framework. And let me tell you what are the things you need to learn in Spring Framework. You should begin with Spring Core module. So you should learn Spring Core fundamentals like dependency injection, AOP, Spring IOC, and bins, lifecycle of bins. So all these fundamentals you should learn. So once you are familiar with Spring Core Fundamentals, then you can learn Spring MUC. So Spring MUC module which we can use to develop our web applications and RESTful web services. So once you are familiar with Spring Core Fundamentals and Spring MUC Pro, then you can learn Spring Boot. So Spring Boot is a very popular nowadays for developing RESTful web services and microservices because it simplifies a lot of Spring configuration and the boilerplate code that is required for spring configuration so once you are familiar with spring core fundamentals like dependency injection spring ioc uh, aop and uh, spring bins spring bins life cycles and all the spring core basics then you should learn spring boot don't directly jump into spring boot because spring boot uh, internal users auto configuration and opinionated approach to configure the configurations so initially you will feel uh, you know very easy but when things get complex then uh, you may not able to understand spring boot internals so make sure you, you you learn spring core basics and then you can learn spring boot spring boot has taken spring framework to the next level it has drastically reduced the configuration and setup time required for spring based projects you can set up spring project with almost zero configuration and start building the things that actually matter to your application and spring boot is uh, you know one of the essential skill for java developers nowadays next is spring security well spring security provides authentication and authorization features and Spring Security is very popular uh, module uh, to you know to secure our Spring web applications and RESTful APIs. So make sure that you will learn about Spring Security. And Spring Security is one of the you know popular uh, security framework in Java, and it provides out of the box authentication and authorization features. And next is Spring Data JPA. Spring Data JPA which we can use to uh, reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer and Spring Data JPA internal uses Hibernate as a default JPA provider. Alright guys, so if you are developing 
spring based applications that i am i highly suggest you guys to use spring data jpa because we can create a repositories and we can get a full crude operations on entities in spring data jpa spring data jpa it reduces a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer so i highly suggest you guys to use spring data jpa and there are a lot of other spring modules out there uh, to work with different technologies if you want to use elastic search in your spring application then you can use spring data elastic search module or if you want to use work with uh, you know uh, cassandra then you can use a spring data cassandra model so there are a lot of modules out there uh, in a spring ecosystem that you can uh, make use of so these are the com commonly used models that i have listed over here so spring framework and the models within a spring framework are very very popular nowadays to work with different uh, you know different uh, uh, applications so next skill is microservices microservices is one of the essential skill for java developers nowadays microservice architecture is the latest hot trend now and many organizations prefer microservices architecture and want to deploy them in cloud environments like aws so spring boot and spring cloud is a great combination to develop microservices based applications so spring boot we can use to quickly develop a rest apis and we can make a jar out of it and we can deploy a jar in different uh, docker containers and spring cloud uh, is provides a lot of uh, you know features uh, which we can use to uh, you know build cloud native microservices all right so spring cloud offers a lot of uh, you know architecture level uh, patterns that we can use uh, to develop microservices applications all right guys in java community uh, you should use spring boot and spring cloud to develop a microservices based architecture and uh, projects all right great and next we have hibernate hibernate is uh, you know one of the popular orm framework so hibernate is uh, the you know most popular jp implementation and we can use hibernate to directly map object relational object into a relational database table so these are the technologies that you can learn to work on java we development now let's take a look into the tools for java development well we have apache maven and gradle so these are the two popular build uh, you know tools and dependency management tool in java community so you can learn either Maven or Gradle to work on Java projects. We have a Git. So Git is very popular uh, version control system that you can uh, learn and you can uh, use in your Java project as a version control system. And you can learn Jenkins. You can use Jenkins for continuous integration and continuous delivery of your project. And next is Eclipse and IntelliJ IDEA and NetBeans. So these are the IDEs. In fact, these are the popular IDEs that you can learn to build a Java project. So next is Docker. So Docker is one of the essential skills for Java developer nowadays. So whenever you want to deploy your application on cloud, then you can use Docker to deploy your services and different containers in Docker. And Jira is must known tool for Java developers uh, who are working in IT companies which uses uh, agile methodologies. Jira is basically used for bug tracking, issue tracking, and to manage a project. And SVN is also a version control system. Uh, so either you can use Git or SVN as a version control for your project. AWS is also an essential skill nowadays uh, to work on cloud. So make sure that uh, you will also have a look into the AWS. And Kubernetes is very uh, a very important skill uh, as a deployment point of view from DevOps. All right, guys. So make sure that you will learn all these tools uh, to become a Java developer. And here I have listed some of the commonly used uh, utility libraries for Java development. So make sure that uh, you check out Goa library, Apache Commons libraries, Jackson JSON libraries, Google JSON libraries and logging libraries, HTTP libraries, XML parsing libraries, and collection libraries. So these are the commonly used utility libraries for Java development. So as a Java developer, you should have a look into all these commonly used utility libraries. All right guys, so these are the 
technology tools and libraries are very important uh, for java development so as a java developer you should begin with core java development so within a core java learn core java uh, basics and fundamentals and then data structures algorithms and testing frameworks databases design patterns all right and learn the desktop application library development libraries like swing or java apex and then move on to java w development you should learn Spring Framework and Spring Boot and also microservices and learn the tools that are required for Java development and then learn the utility libraries for Java, de Java development alright guys so check out all these tools technologies and libraries for Java development so I'm damn sure that if you learn all these tools technologies and libraries you should become a good Java developer alright guys so these are the topics that I want to discuss pretty much in this video. I hope this video is useful for you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in next video.